Hi there, today I've got quite a treat for you guys. I've been in touch with ECS over the past couple of days and they've just sent over their new Intel P67 chipset motherboard. So uh, ECS in the past have been well known for bringing quite cheap and cheerful motherboards to the market. But in this new Black Extreme Edition we're looking at uh, quite high end features. It's directed more towards enthusiast level and you're going to get quite good overclocking capabilities on there. In particular on this board uh, the P67H2A we've got uh, the Lucid Hydra 200 chip so that's going to bring in freeway graphics uh, we have USB 3 which brings in SATA 6G and we've also got on here ECS 15 micron gold plated uh, contacts on the CPU socket on the PCI Express socket and on the memory slots so that just prevents um, any breakages uh, just uh, extends the lifetime of, of the components really um, you know if you drop stuff on it or if you're changing components in and out all the time uh, it's just going to last a lot longer so without uh, you know delaying any further what we'll do is we'll just uh, do a quick unbox show you what's in the package uh, and we'll go through the features and show you what it's all about so ECS have put the P67H2A in quite a nice flashy box there's features on the front and back. Uh, we have more detail on Hydra core and stuff like that. On the front we've got a little cover that uh, pulls off and that's got detail on the new Intel Core i7-2600K. Just shows you some of the stats, the boosting on that and the boosting on Hydra core, uh, the memory as well. But in the centre there we've got a bit of an insight into the chipset on the board, the heat sinks and uh, the colour scheme that's used. So we'll get in there now. Just going to show you the accessories, what you get in there. So opening that box up, we've got the, the uh, driver disc, quick tour, uh, quick guide, uh, usual instructions manual for a bit more detail. Input output panel on the motherboard. Six serial ATA cables there. And we've got a neat little feature uh, which is included up to bracket. And this gives you, just give you a close up on that. So that's a bracket, a two and a half inch, and that gives you US, two USB two, uh, free ports, and that plugs directly into the header on the motherboard so that's quite a neat little uh, included feature. Here's an overview of the board um, with all obviously the stickers I'm going to take these off and just take you on a nice close-up tour of each of the features just give you a bit more of an insight. Okay so I've taken all the stickers off the motherboard I'm going to take a close up look at the components. The first thing that we'll look at is the CPU area. Now this board takes Core i7, Core i5, Core i3 chips which are the second gen Sandy Bridge type. So it will take also the unlocked K series uh, 1155 chips. As you can see there there's a impressive phase power system there, there's 12 phase power design which has the VRD12 compliance and the uh, cooling system here is quite impressive it looks uh, really nice in white and black accents uh, it's a silent solution so it incorporates dual copper pipes which are quite beefy uh, this allows for double heat transfer efficiency If you were wondering what the CPU cooler situation was with the 1155 chipset, you can actually put on 1156 CPU coolers, so if you've got one, it will fit. This board takes 8 pin power. And just beneath one of the heat sinks, there is an LED strip which will indicate whether there's light load or heavy load on the motherboard.
As with the 1156 chipset, the 1155 takes dual channel DDR3. So we've got four slots here, and that will take up to 16 gig of RAM. And we have support for 1066 megahertz right through to 2133OC. With regards to storage, we have six serial ATA ports. Two of those are SATA 6G, which are the black ones, and the other four are uh, just the 3G. That's supported by the Marvel 88SE 9128 controller, which takes a 6G SATA RAID, and there's two additional ports on the input output panel for the 6G. Next to these ports, we have onboard power and reset buttons. Now over on the other side we have a USB 3 header. This allows you to attach the front panel bracket to the port. And next to this is an LED indicator. Now I'm not too sure what this is, but it does have degrees C next to it, so I'm presuming that it might be a temperature output, but it could well be a post indicator as well. With this board we have up to 14 USB 2 ports. Uh, these four headers here will give an additional 8 to the already 6 ports on the input output panel. And then with regards to the USB 3, we have the NEC chip here. There are actually two NEC chips on the board, uh, but both of them will give four USB ports on the input-output panel and also the two additional ones on that front panel bracket. Now we do seem to be lacking in fan headers on the motherboard. Aside from the CPU fan header, we've got an additional two ports. Now on a typical motherboard, you'd probably have three or four, allowing you to increase the amount of case fans within your system. Our board here features the Lucid Hydra 200 chip so this will allow you to mix between NVIDIA and AMD cards at the same time and because of the amount of PCI slots here we've got three-way graphics capabilities. Uh, there's one slot which will allow 16 speed and another two which will allow 8 speed. On top of that we've got two PCI Express slots which are one speed and then another two ports which are PCI, you know, the legacy type. The rear panel or the input output panel has a lot of functionality on there. To start with then we have clear CMOS switch which allows you to clear that CMOS on the fly which is really handy. We have a PS2 connector for mouse or keyboard two USB 2 ports and then an additional four in the red colour and then below that two eSATA in 6G and then dual gigabit LAN ports RJ45s four USB 3 ports in the blue colour and then the audio section which gives you 7.1 in line in, line out, uh, the microphone, the centre, optical etc. So guys hopefully you've seen some of the features on this new board from ECS which is a black edition uh, incorporates that P67 chipset so ultimately I won't be able to give you any results until around January the 9th but uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this and uh, you can see it's going to be quite a promising board hopefully we can get some nice overclocks on it and uh, test out that Hydra see what that's like so if you'd like to leave any comments uh, I'd really appreciate that and um, make sure you keep your eyes on Vortez website because as soon as that NDA lift we'll have uh, all those results and uh, obviously some of the other Sandy Bridge boards too. Thanks for watching.